I want to say two things that there have been many uh, accusations or claims of this nature that had been made earlier and people in authority could have always just claimed that that's just impressionistic and you don't have hard evidence. What was new here was the hard evidence that after the work that Cobra Post did in this field, there was no place to hide. It was established beyond all reasonable doubt that we had a problem in this space and that whatever the regulation and supervision was doing in this field was not good enough. So I think that was an important contribution. My second comment is that, you know what, this is the sort of stuff that regulators and supervisors should be doing. So th in other countries, regulators send out mystery shoppers to actually figure out the lay of the land and get early warning and get feedback about the kind of difficulties that are on the field. But because in India we have very weak agencies like Reserve Bank of India, which don't have much state capacity, we don't do these kind of things. So these problems just get buried and they lurk in the landscape and there are bad things happening and the regulator is the last one to discover. So I think that this is doubly appropriate. So first of all, it is good and healthy to put a spotlight on things that are going wrong. Second, in the context of low state capacity, this is actually playing a doubly useful role that maybe if this was not done by independent organizations like Cobra Post, it would never get done. So I think there is a role for independent media. Okay, it's good for democracy, it's good for liberal democracy if there are more voices. You may agree, you may disagree with the viewpoints. I'm just after that energy and that freedom of speech. It's important to have diverse viewpoints. Uh, we are living in a fascinating moment in our history where we are able to take media away from the control of publishers. And uh, organizations like Cobra Post can increasingly disintermediate the publisher and reach out to audiences directly using things like YouTube. So I think that there's a very unique space that can be created for independent work, which is supported by advertising on YouTube and which has a life of its own without the compromises and the constraints that afflict the mainline the commercial media which has its own compulsions. Uh, the big commercial banks are important advertisers for the mainstream media and I'm sure that constrains the ability of the mainstream media to go after these kinds of stories. So it is appropriate and natural that the energy for describing the difficulties in this space should come from something that is not supported by advertising. One is that there is charitable uh, capital and uh, there is an increasingly sophisticated world of charitable capital that is looking to score impact and to matter. So I would not rule that out. The second is advertising. I would not rule that out. The beauty of India is that the media space has 100 outlets. So one particular outlet may be conflicted but there will always be another that might choose to take it and give back a slice of the advertising revenues to an investigative journalism operation. And the third is uh, to work through the great wide internet and connect to readers directly without going through a publisher. So it seems to me these are three strategies and there are only three strategies. If you look at blogs, okay, you are actually seeing unincorporated individuals, not organizations, individuals, who are writing increasingly important stuff, who in a way constitute an independent non-profit journalism and commentary and who, by the way, have been coming into the gun sites of corporations, who have been getting sued by corporations, and so on. So I think that this is part of a larger phenomenon.